everyone. Uh, welcome back to Dragonfly Engineering. Uh, so this week uh, we've got a, uh, a automation project where we're going to use a new uh, ultrasonic welder, uh, the old uh, blown up ultrasonic welder, which is going to be repurposed as a uh, as a die cutting punch. Uh, and the project is going to be to um, punch out plastic uh, film discs and uh, robotically attach or place the film on top of a of a plastic rim like a bottle uh, or a cap and then we're going to ultrasonically weld this plastic film onto the uh, plastic rim of something. Uh, so the first step is, uh, is that we need to make our cutting die uh, which will then be placed underneath the, uh, the press here by the robot to punch out uh, plastic uh, discs. Uh, and the, uh, I've discovered the easiest way to do that is to take an old high-speed steel end mill which is what I've got right here and I've cut it, cut the bottom off. Uh, so now we've got hardened tool steel, uh, which um, we're going to uh, basically EDM mill. Oh, I forgot to mention we're going to use the sinker EDM machine as well. But we're going to burn out a, a circle in the middle and create a round cutting punch uh, with this uh, high speed steel end mill. Let me get you a closer look on this. Uh, and so what we're going to do is EDM cut uh, out the center of this and create a, 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 a three quarter inch uh, round hole punch. Uh, that the robot will then hold and then stick underneath the uh, air, uh, the, now, the now air press that's behind us and then punch out holes in uh, plastic. And then the little plastic disc will remain inside of the hole punch. The robot will then take it over to the bottle and then push the little disc onto uh, our plastic rim to ultrasonically weld. So let me show you how I uh, cut this guy in half and then we'll go over to the surface grinder. All right, so we're over here at the surface grinder. And I'm going to use these step locks as, as a, a down spin uh, support for our uh, hole punch here. Uh, and we're going to grind this, uh, you know, the die grinded uh, surface off. So I'm going to go ahead and see if you can see how I'm doing this. I'm going to go ahead and stick this guy in here. So having extra uh, metal kind of supports will help support the uh, thing from toppling out as we grind. So yeah, we uh, turn the magnet on and off by spinning a, uh, a uh, cam at the bottom. And so when we spin it all the way over, you want to make sure you're completely uh, on as far as the magnet being up and active. Uh, okay, so now what we'll do is turn on the grinder. Oh, that's the coolant. Turn on the grinder and then uh, I will uh, bring the grinder down to the surface. I think there's still a, a reasonably good dressing on this stone, so let me uh, let me bring the stone down. In fact, probably want a better camera angle. Let me uh, let me reset the camera. All right, so that's a, a better view of the situation. So what I'm going to do is bring the uh, stone in, uh, and since this since the stone is rotating in this direction, we want to bring the uh, stock in to touch off the stone from the down or the out rotating side. That way you don't jam the part up and shoot it across your uh, shop. Let's bring it down uh, until we're close. And then you want to just pick up the corner of the uh, steel, again to reduce the, uh, the initial jamming or uh, over grinding of the part. And I'm going to start going across, sensing to see if I touch, and I did touch right there. That's the burr from the die grinder, so I know I'm close. So it'll come down to a couple of more thousandths, and then I'm going to just enter slowly um, until we start to contact with steel. Like there again, that's more of just the burr. So I'll come down some more. And there we are touching off a little more. And the surface of your rough cut steel part, you don't know like how much, what kind of angles on it or the surface is deviating up into your stone. So you just want to enter carefully and on the back side of the stone. So I'll come down a few more thousands and we'll come in. There we go, starting to get some uh, you can start to go back and forth once you've got a good sense that you're not going to pick up any uh, extra thickness on the steel. And this steel is uh, um, fully hardened for cutting, so we don't want to overheat the surface either because that will anneal the steel and then we'll lose our sharp cutting edge. 
so that's why I'm kind of taking it slow uh, with small cuts, uh, not building up uh, too much heat to anneal the steel. All right, so I'm uh, I've roughed down all of the uh, all of the coarse cuts from the die grinder. Uh, but the next step on this cutter is uh, usually a punch, like a punch cutter. Uh, you don't want to have like a, um, a completely flat ring or a cutting ring uh, that hits the material to cut it all at the same time because you get a lot of forces to kind of start the cut and punch through the material. So what we want to do is add like a two or three degree angle onto this, uh, this ground surface here. Uh, so that we have a lead-in point on the punch to start cutting into the material. And then as the, the angled uh, cutting edge uh, pushes through the material, it cuts easier and it's less forces. Uh, so let's, uh, let's do that next. Uh, we're going to set up an uh, angle vise on this uh, grinder to do that. So one second. All right, so I put the uh, angle vise onto the mag chuck here, and I'm going to go ahead and tighten it down or activate the mag chuck. Uh, to make sure that guy is on there good. In fact, I should probably square it up a little better. It probably doesn't matter, but it's, uh, yeah, that's square. We're square enough for this purpose. Uh, so let me tighten this guy down. And uh, you always want to double check that you're tight. Uh, now what I'm going to do is just lift up on the, uh, the rotating part of this chuck a little bit. About that much, maybe a little more. I don't really have a good number to shoot for other than what looks right. Um, so we just want to, again, like I was saying, we just want to have a lead in point on the, on the hole puncher. The, uh, the parallels correct. Get our part in the V groove and then tighten down. Okay. So both parallel, oh, that parallel is a little loose. Let me push down on it. This vise isn't that great. I need to get a new vise. Okay, both parallels are tight uh, and the clamp is tight. And we've got uh, a little bit of an angle here. This is a sign bar um, vise, so there's two uh, equal um, uh, pivot uh, cylinders on the bottom. And then the gap here is, is the angle. I don't know what it is, we just want a little bit of an angle. So let's go ahead and set up to uh, grind this thing. So the top leading edge of this part is actually in the center because we angled it. And you can see we're starting to touch there. So then we'll come down some more. And then I'm gonna stick a uh, rake angle, I guess is the right term for this hole punch. All right, so you can start to see the, uh, the little angle on the end of that punch there. So let's go ahead and grind the whole facet across. So there you go. That is our angled uh, die punch uh, surface. Next step is we're gonna stick this guy on the uh, EDM machine and basically hog out the middle with electric spark uh, erosion. The nice thing about the EDM machine is uh, when it's milling with electric sparks, uh, you don't lose the temper in the steel. So it's gonna remain as sharp as uh, the regular end mill was. All right, so let's set up on the EDM machine next. Okay, here we are over at the uh, Sinker EDM machine, and this um, machine is a uh, electric spark uh, machining tool. Uh, so we put our um, our vise with the same setup that we had on the grinder uh, onto the mag chuck here on the EDM tool. We can tighten this thing down. And the way this thing works is uh, basically this uh, copper electrode here is electrified. And this uh, machine will apply a voltage um, and create uh, thousands of electric sparks that eat away the steel surface. Uh, and then this, this chuck and this vise and the part are grounded, so that makes an electric circuit. And this machine will sit here and just basically peck away, uh, and all of, the, 
all of this uh, fixture and tooling and everything is under a, a, a pool of um, dielectric oil, uh, a paraffin oil, a real thin oil. And the oil uh, is needed to set the spark gap. Uh, and that allows uh, control of the electric sparks. So let's go ahead and set up this uh, machine to start uh, EDM milling our cutting edge. Uh, so we're going to hog out the center of this uh, of this uh, end mill, this three quarter inch end mill, and create um, a pretty sharp edge around the edge of this uh, of the perimeter of this guy. Uh, the spark gap um, for this milling operation is about three thousandths of an inch. So the best edge that we can get is going to be three thousandths of an inch around this guy. And the reason this copper is on the end of this steel shaft is this tool is used for something else, to cut cones in the bottom of a deep part, uh, but it also works for us. Uh, I think this is like a, I think it's a 45 degree angle on the end of this copper uh, tool here. So anyway, let's set this up. What we're going to do is uh, using the tool and uh, closing the circuit between the copper and the part, we're going to find the edges and the center of this guy, and then I'm going to program the machine to cut um, to a certain depth inside of this uh, of this uh, tool, and then uh, it's going to go around and called it's called orbiting, but do side milling with the electric spark to create our uh, sharp edge. And then we'll follow up with a, a straight copper cylinder to to plunge a uh, through hole all the way through this uh, hard uh, end mill uh, shank. So let's go ahead and start doing that. Okay, so we uh, we wake the machine up here uh, by turning on the the display, and then we power on the pumps and everything. And it gets a little noisier with the pumps going, but we hit power on here. And then you hear uh, it's basically got um, the oil circulating pump that's constantly filtering out the uh, EDM oil, uh, as well as uh, an air conditioner to keep all of the axes exactly the right uh, temperature for maximum accuracy of the part. So with this uh, control pendant and then our part here, we're going to uh, move our, uh, our electrode, our cone-shaped electrode, over and uh, find the center of our part. Uh, so I'm basically just touching X, Y, and Z here with various speeds. Uh, and then we'll drop down to Z. So I'm going to move our electrode over to uh, touch off what looks to be about the center. Uh, this won't be a scientifically accurate uh, finding, but it uh, should be good enough. I will set the Z height. Uh, right now we're at 52. So what I'm going to do is uh, move this electrode over until it just touches the steel, and then the machine will beep and stop uh, because it, it, it detected a collision. As long as you go slow enough, it won't damage it or anything, but then we'll know that we're on the edge, and we'll set that in the controller. We'll just move the X over, and then that beep says, okay, you touched. And then over on the controller, you can see a warning. So we'll say we'll acknowledge that warning. Um, and then under the uh, under the MDI window, which is a manual data input, I'm going to tell it this is the zero point of X. So we'll say G92X, enter and enter. G92 means set the coordinate to zero. Um, but now that the electrode is still touching the uh, steel, I have to override the, uh, the interlock uh, by hitting ST, which means ignore the fact that you've got an electrical short. And then we're going to move Z up uh, to clear the short so that the machine will allow me to run some more. And then when it's cleared, uh, I, can, I can move uh, the electrode around. So we're going to move over to the other side uh, and do uh, a, a process to find the center of this uh, of this uh, of this uh, work that we're gonna this cylindrical piece, uh, and actually uh, uh, Quinn from uh, Blondie Hacks, the YouTube show Blondie Hacks, she showed uh, showed this process uh, with her mill this morning using an edge finder. So I'm doing the same thing using a half function, except I don't know um, with using the manual interface, I actually have to divide by two uh, to find the zero, but uh, same kind of process. So we get down to. 52 again, that's the height of the Z. And then I'm going to move the X over. And right now we've got 37.4. So I'll acknowledge that we touched. And we divide 37.4 by 2. That's 18.7. So now what I'm going to do is go up in Z. 
uh, so we clear the part because I'm going to jog the part over to the center of this, which is 18.7 millimeters, or half the distance that we traveled, and then zero the, uh, the tool again so that uh, the electrode is exactly in the middle of this, of this uh, shaft here. So under MDI, I'm going to tell it to say uh, G, G0 X uh, minus 18.7, enter, and then enter. And you see how it moved to uh, half of the distance that we just measured from, from this side of the electrode to that side and this side of the, of the part and that side. So we divide by two and we're in the center. So now I'll say uh, G92 X, enter. It assumes zero if you don't it'll put in a number. And then now our X is located, uh, the center of our electrode on the X axis is centered on this part. Now I'm gonna repeat the process for Y next, uh, but uh, you don't need to see all that. Okay, so we got the center set, and now what I'm going to do is set the Z height. Uh, same process, we're just going to bring the Z down until it touches and, and uh, closes an electrical circuit, and then says that's the top of the part. Uh, so we're coming down, and then it touches there. And then I'm going to acknowledge that it touched, and then tell it uh, G92Z. Okay, so this is the uh, user interface to the EDM machine. Uh, and these are the basic settings, so I picked um, uh, the most basic one, which is just a copper electrode plunging down into the stock, depicted by this picture here. Uh, so we are going to cut down uh, in depth uh, 9.5 millimeters. This thing's in metric, it's uh, actually a Japanese machine, so there's <laughs> some of the, uh, there's still some kanji in some of the uh, messages that you see on this thing. Uh, but anyway, our materials, uh, the first material is the electrode material, the second is the uh, workpiece uh, material. Uh, it was set to copper and aluminum, but we're going to say it's uh, copper and steel. Oh, well, okay. Uh, and then projected area, uh, it's asking you how big of a cut you're going to do. Oh, actually before that, Lorraine pattern, that's where it will, um, oops. A circle. That's where the uh, the tool will come down, uh, dig out a hole, and then go around and do a uh, an orbit uh, to clean up the sides. Uh, we'll see that a little bit more of that later. Projected area to cut. Um, we are going to do uh, the closest would be 17 millimeters in diameter. Our actual diameter is three quarters of an inch, or 19.05. So 17 is close enough. Roughness, we want to have uh, not very much roughness because this is going to be a cutting edge, so we're going to set it to the smallest. And this is uh, microns. Uh, I, I don't remember the exact call out for the roughness, but it's about as uh, rough as a sheet of uh, copier paper at the, uh, when we're done. Uh, we're going to do one electrode. Uh, undersize is they're asking how, how undersized do you want the uh, electrode to be? Our electrode is 18 millimeters in diameter, where our final cut, we'll just say, is 19 millimeters. So we have um, uh, half a millimeter of undersize per side. So what we're going to do is tell... Uh, and then uh, the next page would be the conditions. And this tells uh, how what's, the machine has figured out how it's going to burn the, the uh, shape into the steel. Uh, some of the interesting things is the uh, current, uh, the amount of electrical current and amps that's going to be used. So it's going to start off with 14.4 amps and it's going to finish with uh, probably something like uh, 0.7 amps. Uh, and then a lot of this is the pecking time because the tool actually bounces up and down to flush oil uh, out of the cut. And uh, there's also numbers for the time that it that it sits at the bottom of the cut and polarity and, and time at the, at the top of the bounce. Uh, you'll see more of this when we actually run it. Uh, and then position, we're just going to say, oh, before I had a, a bunch of holes, we're going to say one hole. And the default is at zero location, which we set in the previous uh, clip. Uh, so I think we are set. Um, so I'll say NC generate and write a program. 
And yes, we'll overwrite the existing program. Oh, one other thing under conditions is it will estimate the time it's gonna take to cut. So we say time study, it says it'll take three hours and 38 minutes, um, which, you know, EDM machines are not fast tools. Usually you set them up in the morning and they run all day and then you see what the part looks like at the end of the day. So we'll say okay to that. Uh, and then the next step, uh, since we've loaded the program, we'll go to the run. And here, if, if you're interested, uh, this is the actual instructions, kind of the G code, uh, but it's extremely complicated with if, if then statements and conditions and decisions, all sorts of complexity, which uh, it would take you know, a lifetime to figure out how to write all this. So you just let the machine do it. Uh, we'll go to home to get to the top of the page. And then we will uh, tell it to run. Uh, so let me set up uh, so you can see the part. Uh, and we will start EDM cutting this, uh, this cutter. All right, so I got the uh, camera looking down at our uh, target piece here. Uh, the electrode's ready and the program set. So when I hit the uh, start button, uh, the uh, tank will rise up and fill the area with oil and then the electrode will start uh, spark uh, milling the uh, the high-speed steel uh, cutter blank that we've uh, ground and prepared here. So let's go ahead and hit the uh, start button. And the program is starting to run off camera, uh, setting up all the settings for the uh, electrical uh, source. There it went to the uh, start position. And now the uh, tank will rise up. You can probably see some of it. And then you see the uh, oil is starting to fill the tank. I got the um, telephoto lens on, so you can't really see the tank rising up. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, so the oil will uh, flood the, the, uh, the tank, uh, submerging the electrode and the part uh, so that it doesn't catch on fire from the electric sparks. And then it will start to uh, do the uh, cutting and it kind of hops up and down. I'll zoom in on it as soon as the tank fills. And here we go. So let me zoom in. And all those uh, little uh, bubbles are uh, burned dielectric oil and, and steel and copper. Uh, yeah, let me turn the lights off so you can see some sparks. Anyway, the uh, electrode will just hop up and down there and it's slowly eating away the, uh, the oil, or the, uh, the steel on our, uh, our high-speed steel punch. There you can start to see more activity. There you zoom out a little bit. My tripod isn't the greatest. And then that wispy uh, smoke is oil and then the black uh, soot that you see suspended inside of the oil kind of floating away is uh, atomized steel for the most part. So there you can see the sparks cutting away at it. And it'll do this for about three hours. Uh, so the, uh, the undersize that we were talking about before, that uh, kind of determines how big of a spark we can get. Because uh, right now the EDM machine is roughing out the steel and uh, creates big craters in the, in the steel part. So the, the bigger the undersized electrode, the more power it can dump in and the bigger craters when it's removing steel. And then uh, later on in the cut, the uh, electrode will have a much finer current and voltage, uh, tiny little sparks, and it'll kind of polish off all of the craters from the rough cut. So this is the rough cut we're seeing right now. For the finished cut, you can't really see much happening. It's just kind of just slowly touching and electrically polishing the surface. So it's been about an hour and a half of, uh, of the EDM machine uh, milling this, uh, this steel post. And now we're kind of at the, uh, the finish phase. Uh, so you can see it's just barely polishing with electric sparks, tiny, tiny little sparks, uh, polishing the insides of the hole that it's cutting. And uh, right now the machine is uh, doing an orbit cut. So it's, uh, it's basically hit bottom and now it's cleaning up the rough cuts from the large sparks and uh, essentially electro-polishing the uh, sides. Uh, and if we can look over here on the screen, you can see that yellow dot shows the uh, out of concentricity that the uh, electrode is, is, is turning right now. 
So if you see where the yellow dot is on the screen and then we look at the actual part, uh, you can see the sparks uh, basically uh, are coinciding with that yellow dot, which shows that the, the, uh, the electrode is, is kind of rolling around in a circle. So here we're back and you can see how the new location is there. And then we can kind of see that the sparks are, are following along. Tiny little bubbles and uh, the machine is just about done. I think it's on its next to last uh, finishing step and uh, probably got another 10 minutes to go. So we are going to uh, fixture this, uh, this little air cylinder. Uh, right there, focused again. It's so small the camera can't focus it. <laughs> uh, into the, uh, to the center axis of our hole punch. So this air cylinder will exist inside of this cone shape and then we're gonna we're gonna uh, glue on a uh, a little uh, a little disc uh, onto the tip of the or probably pr uh, press fitting glue a little disc onto the plunger this uh, this sixteenth inch uh, rod here uh, and then uh, so when the robot uh, moves this punch with a piece of paper uh, or uh, plastic uh, film inside of the cutter uh, the plunger that's underneath the film will um, will push the uh, the disc that we cut off uh, and place it onto the uh, appropriate location on the plastic base that we're going to weld this uh, plastic film onto. Anyway, so uh, the next step is to cut a axial hole down the center of our hole punch, uh, probably all the way through, so that we can uh, glue this cylinder in place. Um, there is a 1032 thread at the bottom, but um, uh, I don't. I'm not. I don't think we can practically cut uh, a 1032 thread into this uh, hard tool steel cutter, uh, and then a hose will come out the bottom of this guy. So let's go ahead and uh, machine the uh, copper electrode, which is our cutting tool that will bore a hole down the center of our hardened tool steel uh, uh, cylinder here. There's a little bit of a artifact from the previous electrode because uh, I I just reuse this copper for multiple electrodes so we get a nice clean face uh, so we'll set uh, Z absolute switch to millimeters then we'll uh, see where uh, 43 millimeters is on this guy we might have to do a few steps because otherwise our electrode is gonna flop around because uh, we're extending too far out from supported stock so yeah we're gonna kind of do some cone cutting here let's get to uh, at least close to where we want to be this is 1600 rpm and I'm just manually operating the CNC lathe uh, so that's uh, 43 so we'll come up here at some point I need to get a diameter measurement uh, to uh, set the x-axis. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'll stop the lathe spindle and with our calipers I will measure the diameter and then basically tell that on tell the DRO what the what the current diameter is. Okay, so we're looking at, uh, oh, exactly 12 millimeters. <laughs> oh, I was lucky. 12 millimeters, absolute. And we're going to go down to 4.33 millimeters. We've got to step it uh, because if we try to cut 4.3 millimeters over this whole length, then the, then the copper is going to flex instead of cut, and we won't have a very accurate part. So I'm going to kind of just continue to step down a cone shape here.
Actually, this corner seems a little sharper than I anticipated. Uh, this straight from EDM machining, and it's it's actually a razor, or quite, not quite a razor, but it can it can cut paper. That's not torn. That's cut. So it's it's still not super sharp, but for an EDM edge, that's a pretty good testament to the Sodic EDM machine's uh, finish when you can cut a basically almost a razor edge into your part. That's pretty nice. All right, back. Here's a, a little more video of the uh, finished cut for the orbiting uh, EDM machine. Uh, and I think we're going to conclude this video uh, for this week. Uh, we'll have to break this series up into a couple of videos. Uh, next week, I'm going to show uh, the process of, uh, of tearing down and retrofitting the uh, blown up um, ultrasonic welder from the previous episode and set up the workstation with the uh, robot, the new ultrasonic welder from Branson and the converted uh, air punch into uh, a working um, work cell. Uh, so stay tuned to next week and I'll see you then. Bye. Thanks for watching.